I really felt like this movie gave me a taste of what's to come in future years. It feels like it's a leap ahead. What's up everybody, I'm Rick and I'm Anna and welcome to our bucket list channel, a channel in which we try to realize the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. Today we're going to review five star final as part of our goal uh, and our bucket list to watch every movie that was nominated at the Academy Award from 1927 to 2028. So Anna, the way we're going to do this is uh, the same way we always do these reviews. First part is going to be spoiler free. Yes. And then in the second part, we're going to uh, deep dive into some of the scenes or some of the aspects of the movie that caught our attention and we're going to be spoiling stuff. Uh, don't worry though, if you don't want to get spoiled, we will warn you before we get there. If you also want to see our ranking, because we've been ranking these movies, we've now done what, like a five, six years of the Academy Award. This is the fifth, but we've also done 2019. So this right. is the sixth year we do. We've watched 31 movies with this one. And uh, what we started with this fifth Academy Award is a ranking. Every time we watch a year, we rank the movies within that year. And so if you want to see the ranking, it's going to be at the very end. But if you don't want to get spoiled and still want to see the ranking, uh, there is going to be a timestamp in the description below. But before that? <laughs> yes, so before that, all of that, uh, just some general trivia, general information about the movie just to get ourselves into a state of mind, you know, maybe reminisce a bit because we didn't watch that movie just now, we watched it yesterday. So. So, Five Star Final, a movie that uh, came out in 1931, based on a 1930 play of the same name by Louis Wedzonkorn. It was directed by Mervyn Leroy, and here I got a list of actors a bit longer than unusual. Usually I pull out like one or two, or two or three rather, but here I... I picked almost all the actors in the movie because they all, they're all important in some way, you know? Right. Uh, so Edward G. Robinson as Joseph W. Randall, Marianne Marsh as Jenny Townsend, H.B. Warner as Michael Townsend, Anthony Bushell as Philip Weeks, uh, Fred Starr as Nancy Voorhees or Townsend, Ona Muson as Kitty Carmondi, the journalist girl, Alan McCahon as Miss Taylor, the receptionist. Boris Karlov as T. Vernon Isopod. Uh, did you recognize Isopod, the, the, the actor, Boris Karlov? No. No? So Boris Karlov broke through to the uh, mainstream, like uh, became a star later that year for his iconic portrayal of the monster in Frankenstein. Oh, I, know, I wouldn't. I, I never watched the no, movie. No, you've never seen, but even scenes from that uh, version of the movie? No? no. Oh, I, like the whole time I was looking at him, I'm like, yeah, I've seen this guy somewhere. <laughs> But yeah, it's Frankenstein's monster, and not Frankenstein itself. Oh, yeah. right. The mistake often made. The movie was nominated for one Academy Award, Best Picture. That's why we're watching it. It was remade by Warner in 1936 as uh, Two Against the World, which 1936, that's what, five years after the movie came out? Oh, yeah. And like people often complain, like Hollywood doesn't have any new idea. They just make remake and remake and remake. They were doing that even back then. Yeah, we've discussed this yeah. before, but it's true. Like the number of movies that have been remade mm -hmm. and uh, inspired from other sources. From and books, from like uh, plays. plays. From, it's yeah. a majority of the movies. Exactly, yeah. that we've watched from these old, uh, uh -huh. older times. And so that's not a new thing. It's not because half of the movie now is our comic book movies and you're like, oh, Hollywood doesn't have any idea they were doing that back then too yeah the 1936 version starred humphrey bogard as randall and it's set in a radio station instead of a newspaper interesting yeah um that's about it uh, in terms of info that i had so let's get our conversation going first of all anna can you tell me can you tell us did you like this movie yes I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great. You look at me as if you do not agree. No, because no, after the movie <laughs> yesterday, you're like, oh, I have so many things to say about oh this. Oh my God, yes. And I was wondering, I thought, what are the things that she has to say? Because I love this movie. Oh, I, I know. It's you know, all good things oh, no, that I, I want to say. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I thought it was great. First of all, the actors, mm -hmm. just amazing performances dialogue uh -huh. oh my god like so the dialogue especially it feels like beyond what we've seen so far 
And I gotta say, like, everybody was amazing. That's why I pulled out their names, right. uh, all of them, because we're probably going to talk about each of them in separate uh, occasion. But especially uh, Edward Robinson the, the uh, as, as Randall. Randall, the jur- journalist. Oh, he yes. was so good. He was so His good. His performance, mm-hmm. I swear. I haven't really watched a lot of uh, movies from, I don't know, like the noir type of mu- movies, you know, like detective stories. You know, with the jazzy music and uh, you hear the character's thoughts kind of stuff. Mm. But it felt like that, his character. It felt like just a hint of that. Like, you feel like, oh, it's coming. It, we're still far away from that uh, period. It's what, like, uh, 50s, if I'm not mistaken? I mean, I didn't really get a noir vibe. For no, 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 no. Not that. Just, like, his character. It had that, like like depth to to the character mm. you know there's definitely layers that's why i love this movie so much there are layers not only in in terms of the storytelling the message there's a message which oh yeah there hasn't been a lot of these movies with a message like here it's clear yes and th- everything is layered every character you know as facets that you're like oh okay maybe you know you can see it from a different angle and i, I loved it but we're veering away from our talk yeah the dialogue i just i felt like it worked Mm. every time it was so well written and like so well performed believable most of the time you think like oh this is something that these characters would say you know yeah exactly i don't know exactly how to say this it feels like the older movies that we've watched sometimes the dialogue is just a little bit bland Mm. or is just serves to tell the story in this movie i haven't seen that at all like the dialogue is like you said it's very like realistic it feels very natural yeah we're just going through the normal continuation of whatever conversation you're having yes. uh, and this scene rather than or you're saying that because the movie needs to get to some point you exactly know? and the performances i feel like there there's a lot of emotional scenes mm. for different characters throughout the movie and they've all done a great job at that because we've seen very emotional scenes not being as convincing yeah, it's before hit, hit and miss yeah uh, i uh, feel like in this movie they've all done a great job mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so in terms of story you talked a little bit about it uh... the premises of the story i thought was great mm. the story itself did have a couple of elements that maybe you know didn't resonate with me that well more like uh, in terms of you know character choices mm-hmm. but the story as a whole like the the idea i thought it was great and it goes into like the third act goes into a direction like towards the end i didn't expect you know like the movie gets to a big uh, a big part that you think is the finale yeah. i don't know if you felt like that too like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh the movie is over now but then it keeps going right and it gets to a, a, another part that is also also very interesting yeah like, i totally know for, what you're talking about yeah. for a bit i thought oh they should have ended the movie they're gonna just uh, like stretch it for for no reason but no there was a reason there was a reason yeah and they ended it in a good way yeah and in terms of uh, look and sound of the movie i thought it looked great mm. again it feels you know like a step up from uh, most movies that we've seen from the the time i wouldn't say step up i feel like it, it was done in a competent way like that i have nothing to say against it but at the same time it's not like uh... i felt like just the image in general was clear in all mm. the shots but it's not Which pushing any, that... any boundaries yeah, you know? uh, yeah that's true that's true it's not something uh extraordinary yeah but i do feel like the, the movie was w- very well filmed mm. in all the, of the scenes yeah, yeah maybe that had something to do with the fact that most of the scenes if not all of them maybe are filmed inside in, inside and then one rooms this is also a play set you know like right. these are different sets for the play and we're just like playing in these like specific environment though there is a few scenes outside but like very little now we're gonna get into our spoiler uh, discussion. So again, if you don't wanna get spoiled, uh, I invite you to like this video, come back for our next review. If you wanna see the uh, ranking right away, the timestamp is in the description below. So, spoiler time. For that, let's give synopsis. The city editor of a sleazy tabloid goes against his own journalistic ethics to resurrect a 20 year old murder case with tragic result and tragic, tragic they are <laughs> we can start with that yeah it took with that tragic result mm-hmm. uh, double suicide right uh, so Frances star character nancy Voorhees and her husband both killed themselves because of the story because of the, the action of the main character robinson so that's actually why i wanted to start with this is that is because that is actually the part where it didn't really resonate with me that well 
That she killed herself? That both of them killed themselves. Why? Because, I mean, I get that it's supposed to be, like, is the, is the tragedy of it, right? Like, they couldn't, well, she couldn't take it. She couldn't take being dragged through this all over again and seeing her life, her husband's life and her daughter's life being destroyed mm -hmm. because, because of, of that, her. because of her. Yeah. But then the father also kills himself, leaving the daughter by herself with no protection, with no... But like, it's, it's for love. I feel like that's... Yes, This I is something that happens all the time. Yeah, you know? that it's is... It's not unbelievable. That is true. I under, I, I'm not saying it's not believable. I'm just saying I would have liked to see, uh, you know, the characters, at least one of them actually fighting it. But they fought. They tried. They yeah, tried to, to stop it. And then it's when she feels like there is no possible outcome. You know, she tries calling the owner of the paper. She tries calling uh, Randall. Nothing happens. You know, they just hang up on her and she feels lost. She feels like there's nothing we can do. This story is going to get out and like I will ruin my whole family's life. Her her family's life would already would, would be ruined anyway, is what I'm saying, you know. For the two of them, loving their daughter as much as they do, to leave her by herself. The first thing that I thought about when when yeah, but the father also killed himself was that the parents of the, the boy already know anyway. What if they refuse, the, what if he refuses to marry her? What's going to happen to her then? Like, you would think of that. But I, I understand, like, ethically speaking, you would say, like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. But what I'm saying is that this is a, Pas a passion act, you know? Right, yeah. That, that is true, yeah. It's never and done... And that's what I'm saying. It's not like it doesn't work. It works for the story. I think that it works great. Hmm. I just wish there was another outcome. Mm. At least partially different. I, I found that so interesting, that outcome though. Like, I, yeah. that's part of the reason it why was I love it. Because it was very it, interesting. Because it ends indeed. horribly, you know. They're, they're doing that thing. They're, they're a tabloid. They're uh, resurrecting the story just for the sake of, you know, dragging her name into the, the mud and selling more paper. Right. And they don't realize the kind of impact that this can have on people's life. Or rather, even when they do realize, they don't care. Yeah. Which is uh, actually even worse. Well, they do care when they die. Both of them care. But the other, like, uh, I think they're investors or they're... Like, no, no, it was the owner. No, the owner cares and uh, Randall cares. Because he, when That's he goes true. into he Randall's does. office, he says, like, maybe we should stop this uh, series, you know? Mm. He, and you can tell he's yeah, saying, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that part. I'm going to leave for London. He feels bad about it. He, don't, yeah. he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Right. He, don't, he doesn't want to take responsibility and he doesn't want to be questioned about it either, you know? Yeah. As opposed to Randall, who's like, I'll take full responsibility. This is our fault. We did this. But who I'm speaking about is the two other people, the investors, they don't care at all. Oh, yeah. No, they don't. Definitely not. Like, all they care about is, oh, we're selling more paper than ever and so we should continue doing that to get back to the point you were making about the dad i feel like his decision was also made with uh, the idea in mind that the truth will come out all of the truth will come out he, he says at the beginning of the movie that he would be devastated if the girl would ever learn that he is not really her father oh yes and so that is part of the truth too that will mm. come out you know and what what is his uh, state of mind at that point is he thinking oh she's not gonna want to be with me anymore she'll think like like, I'm not her, her dad, a real dad, you know, I yeah. married the murderer of her dad, you know, what, the kind of thought that can go through his mind, like, right. maybe he also thought, like, there's no possible outcome. Like, good uh, outcome for me in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, I see. Oh, I didn't think about that. But yeah, this is, and speaking of uh, that tragic outcome, so the double suicide, leaving the girl alone, the marriage uh, almost in shambles, uh, only Randall takes responsibility and then have a, has a big speech about the role of the media. And that's what I was saying, like, this movie has a message and it doesn't hide its message. It's right. very clear. What did you think of that? I thought it worked really, really well. I feel like his speech, because we've seen a, like small uh, like speeches from other characters in other movies. Mm. I feel like his was really like had an impact. It was strong. It was strongly worded. It was well delivered. You know, it, it, it was a it was a good scene. Yeah, like, I, lo uh, I love that sentence that he says to uh, the owner of the paper, like, we both murdered her, you murdered her for, for circulation, so for the paper to sell more, and I murdered her for wages. Right. Yeah. What yeah. other scene would you like to talk about? So, uh, there's so many. There's uh, the moment when the dad realized that, uh, well, sees the Nancy boy, he's dead. And then the kids come in. The acting oh, during yes. that scene. Like, you could feel, like, even the, the girl says, Oh, dad, you're trembling. What's happening? And you could feel it the entire time. Like, how stressed he is. He's trying to calm her down, try to convince them to leave the apartment. Right. And the whole time I was stressed with him. I was like, oh, my God. Are they gonna figure it out? Are they gonna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That was yeah. a that was a good scene also. And mm -hmm. then 
the improvisation when the phone rings and he pretends to talk to his wife yeah, on the phone. But it's the other journalist girl. Right. Yeah. Like he doesn't even care about what she's saying, mm -hmm. the, the journalist girl. Yeah. I also really like, well, I not necessarily as a scene, but the, the character, uh, Jenny's uh, fiance. Philip. Philip Weeks. Yes, I liked his character because I thought, you know, seeing how things are going, I thought, oh, he's going to be that weak character who just lives, you know, with yeah. his parents. Because his parents want to stop the marriage when they find out the, the truth about the girl's mother. And I thought, oh, for sure he's going to be that. And then the this, this story will end with her being by herself. But he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He stands up to his parents in like a very, you know, dignified way. Yeah. And I like that. I like I like that they put that character there. Yeah, it makes I feel like there, there are two characters in in this who have uh, kind of the moral high ground. One more than the other, uh, Philip uh, in this case, who never veers. You know, like he says even to his parents, she's not different. She's not a different Jenny than she was yesterday. And, and, yes, just, and yesterday you liked her. Yeah, exactly. You're just letting your prejudice uh, get in the way of things. And uh, Miss Taylor, the receptionist, oh yes, who the whole time thinks that this is a horrible idea, doesn't like the this workplace right uh, but she's also very much aware that she doesn't have a word to say and exactly. can't really have an impact and so just like her boss both of them find solace and alcohol they both drink right they're drunk at several moments in the movie so you can see the, the parallel here i, I feel, was interesting. i feel like now that you mentioned that i see it it's like a, a balance right if you if you consider like um, uh, the the receptionist and her boss as like, not, not a couple because they're not together but as a pair mm -hmm. and also like Jenny and her uh, her and fiance Philip, yeah. yeah I feel like they're such well balanced you know couples of characters mm. that it it works so well and it's nice the the balance is uh, reached at the end too when Philip stops Jenny from uh, doing the same thing her mother did and killing someone and goes away with her and uh, Miss Taylor also goes away with Randall when Randall decides to to, to quit the, resign, the yeah. newspaper she doesn't have to resign too yeah. but she does right and, so th and she's happy nice to too. do so <laughs> yeah she's very happy <laughs> yeah she was waiting for that great movie anything else uh, you want to touch on maybe uh, maybe we could just talk a little bit more about that ending scene when uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also such a, a well done scene because also right before he leaves the, the office he gets a phone call about some new story of a murder happening somewhere Yeah. and the way he, he answers to that yeah it's like do whatever it's you like, want with that story I don't care and yeah. like, he really goes all out into exactly. like and that's what I was talking about earlier with the, the speech this is the big speech about how what they're doing is wrong basically right you know? Exactly. Uh, and it's not uh, against a journalist in general because he wanted to do normal journalistic work, you know, cover politics, cover like news yeah, story yeah, in, and, actually or important, important stories. Uh, but the other people wanted more circulation and so they wanted to be more of a tabloid, you right. know, chasing cheap stories. No, cheap with stories, the, you know. With the, like an emotional impact. Exactly. People's story, but like a lot of them were about dragging people into the mud, you know, like just to sell paper. Uh, it, feels, it feels very real. Though. Yeah, you know, because it feels like this, something that happens even today. But this type of paper still exists today, you know. Like whenever you go to the grocery store, they're right there in front of you. Oh yes. They're usually like some horrible news about the the royal family that doesn't make sense. You know? Right. Exactly. Like that. That still happens. And yeah. you know, you watch a movie like this, and it makes you reflect a little bit upon like the impact mm -hmm. that you know uh, sharing sharing around the story like this. Yeah. With you know whether or not it is true, and, is, it has no point. But should you, you know, be digging the graves? And now the impact is heightened by the internet, you know. Right. It doesn't take long until someone's name gets destroyed by one story. And in this case, you know, she was trialed, she was acquitted, like it should be the end of it. But no, they wanted to sell papers, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was good a good story. movie. Oh, we didn't talk about uh, Isopod uh, much. Uh, what did you think of him? He was kind of creepy the yeah, whole time. Yeah, he was. I can't really think of any, like much to say about him other than the fact that I feel like he was well played, the character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it wouldn't have worked, mm. you know, if, if the, the actor hadn't been able to you know deliver that type of a character yeah but th there's one element that i wanted to touch on specifically that's why i brought him up uh when he gets the story mm -hmm. uh, after tricking the the parents he 
brings it late. Yes. Because he's out drinking. And then when asked why, he says to give him courage. So do you think there was also a moral dilemma for him to know, like, I have to write this, but like... I know that it's horrible, like I shouldn't. That's interesting. I didn't think about that because other than that, he never showed any... Any type of remorse. Like, exactly. Yeah. So it is possible or it's possible that he was just, you know, just wanted to drink. Yeah. Um, and so. after, at the end, he seems a bit uncomfortable when uh, uh, Jenny uh, comes, but I wouldn't say whether or not that's remorse or just... He feels, it, he, it feels like he's just a coward. Yeah. Like yeah. he wants to take the benefits of doing this, but... You know, none of the, the consequences. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, shall we move on to our ranking? Right. Yes, so the current ranking for the fifth uh, Academy Award movies are number one, The Champ, number two, Aerosmith, number three, Bad Girl. I was debating that uh, within myself, like thinking, not debating. Uh, before we started filming, like where would I put this? Where would I put this? And uh, let me throw this to you. Let number one. Yes, I agree. Yes? I agree totally. Yeah, I agree. And so there is not much <laughs> of, of a debate to I be had. I guess not. I guess not. But, but yeah. you could tell me maybe uh, what's your reason mm? for putting it in number one. Like, what's the main reason why you wanted it there? I feel like this. This is a movie that knows what it wants to be and it succeeds at like every level of it, you know? I don't know if you remember when we were saying like, I don't know that bad girl, some of the stuff that were happening there, they wanted me to feel the way I was feeling. Like, so there was a disconnect there. Aerosmith and the champ. Aerosmith, I feel there are issues with the storytelling at some parts, not all of, all of the time. The movie is good, but still. And then the champ, there are some issues with the performances at some points. None of this applies, in my opinion, to uh, Five Star Final. If I had to criticize some stuff, how would I even criticize? I'm thinking about it right now. I haven't thought about it. I mean, surely there are things, but I think we're so hyped yeah, about we're how so good high it right was now. overall. Yeah, but no movie is perfect, but the overall impression that I have of it is great. And so I see no reason not to put it at number one. While these others, I always had at least one thing that I was like, oh, this. You right. Know. In in my case, I decided to put it at number one because I, I really felt like this movie gave me a taste of what's to come in future years. It feels like it's a leap ahead in terms of the atmosphere of the movie. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. As I was watching it, like half of the movie, that was the thought on my, like in yeah. the back of my mind was like, oh my God, this is like, it feels like we're 10 years ahead. Yeah, I feel like we're still going to get through roller coasters. Yeah, uh, obviously. I don't time. think yeah. it's going to go all yeah. uphill from yeah. here. But this movie, I feel like it's, it, mm. it gives me a taste of that. And so the new ranking is number one, five star final, number two, the champ. Number three, Hero Smith, and number four, Bad Girl. That will be it for our review of Five Star Final, the 1931 movie. If you want to see us do more reviews like this, uh, please subscribe to this channel. We don't only do movie reviews, though. We also do a lot of things because this is a bucket list channel. Uh, a lot of things related to our bucket list, like uh, learning to cook, uh, traveling, uh, watching movies, watching anime, etc., uh, etc. Et subscribe if you're interested. Uh, comment in the comment section below. What did you think of this movie? If you've seen it and if you haven't are you interested in seeing it like the video if you did and have a nice day oh i'm not ducking any of the blame for this thing you thought up the murder and i committed it but i did it for smaller profit for wages you did it for circulation you must be mad mad yes i am all my life i'll be mad because all my life i'll be seeing nancy Bury's daughter standing there and asking me why i killed her mother